the signal outdoors. We're in the backyard one more time here. We're gonna try another test run overnight in the backyard here. I have some lessons that I learned on my first trip out. It was a little uncomfortable. So I have, I think just, I think just two, two new pieces of gear to help make this go a little smoother. Um, so we'll see how it goes here. I'm still mid process of setting up here. Um, I'll kind of show you what we have going on here. So we have a little bit of a different setup this time. I have a tarp set up as a, makes a nice large vestibule outside where I can put my, my sled and keep that outside. I can do a little bit of wood processing out here if I have to. Um, and if it's snowing heavily, I can stay out of the snow. It just kind of gives me a little bit more square footage to, to live in here. And you can see I just have a uh, running up to the center pole in the TP there. Then it's just going back to, to the deck here, but go back to a tree obviously in a real world scenario. So I'm just kind of got my stuff out here and I'm unpacking. I plan to just bring, a, hoping to just bring a 40 liter pack with me on these sorts of trips because my sled's so large. I'll show you the sled a little more in the morning and how that's working. Let's finish unpacking here. Get the sleep system set up. We'll get the stove set up and we'll get cranking. All right, so the biggest change on this trip is gonna be my sleep system. In the first go, I didn't really like being directly on the snow. I like to have a nice clean spot to sleep. So I got this on sale from Lux Hiking, Lux Hiking Gear. It's a single person inner tent and it's, I think it's technically designed for a much smaller teepee. But as you can see, I have a, a stick here running up, that's pitching the tent. And then I'm pulling it all forward with a guideline that's running across the tent here. Um, you can see it's uh, wasting a little bit of space back there, but it's it's not taking much space up here at all. And my sleeping pad just fits perfectly in there; it fills up the whole thing. Let's take a look inside here. So it's just enough room to sleep in. All right, so now that we have the we have the inner tent set up here, step two is to put down my first layer of sleeping pad. I'll have two sleeping pads tonight. This is a Thermarest Z Light foam sleeping mat. It's R value is 2.0, I believe. And then next we'll put down our Nemo Tensor insulated. So you got the sleeping pad all inflated and you can see it fills this one person inner tent just perfectly. So this is the the long and wide, wide mile of the sleeping pad, so it's the largest one you can get for this particular model. And it fills this up nicely. I was afraid it was gonna be a, a little too big, but it's just right. Even though my down sleeping bag I think should be plenty warm for tonight, I'm gonna put a. I decided rather than investing in a 
another more expensive sleeping bag that can go down e to even lower temperatures. I'm going to try to utilize the gear I have. And I'm going to put a sleeping bag inside a sleeping bag. So my down sleeping bag is actually the long model. Um, I got it at an REI garage sale. Uh, I got a super good deal on it, so it's longer than I need, but in this case, it's actually going to work out good because it's going to fit another sleeping bag inside of it real nicely. So this is a 40 degree, super cheap synthetic bag that I'm going to put inside the REI Magma here. One kind of annoying thing with these two sleeping bags is their zippers are on opposite sides. <laughs> I can make it work. Let's get the stove set up. So here's a pro tip for you guys. I just figured this one out. I don't know if anyone else has kind of stumbled across this as well, but if you happen to have this 3W stove and the Mega Horn tent, um, the Mega Horn tent comes with a piece of Velcro for wrapping it up and keeping it in a tight bundle inside of the duffel. What I did was I put the stove together, then wrapped that Velcro around the stove and strapped it together. Now it's not going to fall apart on me while I'm trying to put the legs in and the legs are what kind of keep, hold the stove together. So the tricky part with this stove is it's falling apart while you're trying to put the legs, legs on it and just wrap this Velcro around there and it stays together for you while you're attaching the legs much easier.
So I, I purposefully didn't bring any water out with me. I've been wanting to try my hand at melting snow to see how that goes. So we spread out an Nalgene bottle and I'm gonna melt water on the stove and see how long that takes. I'm thirsty. Let's hope this is quick. <laughs> Almost got my first boil going here. This is three scoops of snow. Takes quite a while to actually boil water on here. I'm just finally getting the stove really raw in here. So the tent's warming up nicely. We have, let's see here, 46.9 degrees. So I went to the gas station and got some nice dry wood I just wanted to take it easy on myself since my last two runs are with wet wood um, you know just practicing worst case scenario um, I could get about 10 10 degrees boost out of out of that um, but I now I have kiln dry wood from the gas station it's all pretty much oak I think um, and it's <laughs> it works quite a bit better than wet wood <laughs> surprise surprise so uh, the tent's warming up nicely. I'm just gonna keep making water here. Looks like we finally got our first boil. So one thing um, in the summer is I just carry a regular, you know, water bottle from the gas station with me, um, like a smart water bottle with me. Um, in the winter, it's better to carry a Nalgene water bottle with you because you can dump boiling water into an Nalgene bottle. It won't melt. It's it's perfectly safe for for boiling liquids. So just gonna keep making water. So three scoops of snow gave us about 12 ounces of water. This holds about 32 ounces. So six more scoops of snow. Stove pipe hot. Ouch. <laughs> Pay attention, Aaron. Pay attention. It didn't get me so bad. It scared me more than anything. So we got the stove going probably around 8.30ish, it's 10 o'clock at night now. And what do we have here? <whistles> 52 degrees in this tent now, which is the warmest I've ever had it. It's actually pretty comfortable in here. Still melting down snow to, to get some drinking water. I just want to... Make sure I've done that and know the process before I try to do it out, out in the woods. So when you have, when you're out in the cold and you're using a stove to create, you know, warmth, you don't really want to waste that warmth. So it's a kind of a popular, what popular thing to do is to take your warm water in your Nalgene that you're waiting to cool down to drink. And I put the lid on, make sure the lid's on very tight. This actually kind of makes me nervous to do this, but uh, just throw it inside your sleeping bag. Use that heat to get your sleeping bag nice and warm for you. That's where I'm storing the water bottle in the meantime. 
Waste not, want not. So with hot denting, the one thing I kind of learned that's kind of a fool's errand is to attempt to keep the stove going all night long. Um, maybe if you were within arm's reach of the stove and you had, you know, wood by you and you could just kind of roll over and throw another log in and keep it going. Or, you know, if you had more than one person with you, then you could, you could try to. But on a solo trip, just getting up all the time to feed the stove is just kind of... It's just too much work for, for me, at least. I'm finding it's probably a better idea to just have the gear to stay warm at night for the conditions you're in. And let the stove go out, have a bunch of wood ready to go in the morning, and just start the stove in the morning right away and warm back up. So I'm kind of winding down for the night a little bit. And I have a bunch of kindling here to get the stove going in the morning. I have plenty of wood left. I'll probably keep the stove going for a little while longer here and stay up and relax for a little bit. Um, I want to see how warm I can get. I'm just going to just kind of keep feeding the stove here and I'm just going to shove a bunch of wood here in there in a minute. See how hot I can get it. I was up to 52 degrees in here a little bit ago, but it dropped because I let the stove die down a little bit too much. So I finished getting my water ready. <clears throat> so it basically took three boils um, and nine scoops of snow essentially. So I have plenty of water now. There's only a few floaters in there, but they sink to the bottom, so that's not so bad. I was contemplating bringing out like a, like a handkerchief or something to filter the water through, but I can see that the, the, the gunk that's in the snow just kind of sinks to the bottom anyways, and it's fine. I'll let that cool down for a while. Possibly sleep with it. <laughs> That'll keep me nice and warm. Well, I'm gonna get ready for bed here. I'm gonna, I got a second pair of wool socks. I'm gonna wear two pairs of wool socks tonight. I got long johns on and water resistant hiking pants. Um, and just a few base layers here. And then I'm gonna put on sleep in my jacket, I think, and stocking cap. So hopefully that should keep me plenty warm. And I got two sleeping bags, two sleeping pads. I got the inner tent now, so, and it shouldn't get all that cold tonight. I'm thinking like maybe 15 degrees tonight. We'll see. Um, so shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. Should be an easy night, hopefully. Hoping to make it through the night. But we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Well, we made it through the night. It's pretty cold this morning, 16 degrees. Um, it's about as cold as I expected it to get. Hopefully you can see me okay. My normal uh, filming light panel, and that's, that's dead, deader than a doornail. <laughs> so I didn't really like the cold, so I'll have to keep that in mind on future trips and make sure I have a nice battery bank with me. So let's get the fire going here and warm up it's 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 pretty cold near my boots <laughs> I went to go grab my boot when I got up and <laughs> it was stuck to the ground I had to pull on it pretty hard to to get it off the ground so that was kind of funny but I'm gonna get a fire going here and make some coffee
Got the water boiling. Now it's time to add some coffee grounds and try our hand at cowboy coffee again. See how it goes here. This might kind of look like instant coffee, but it's really just coffee, uh, coarsely ground coffee beans. Um, I forgot my spoon, so let's find a spoon here. That'll work. We'll give it a little extra flavor. <laughs> we gotta put more wood in the fire. Pay attention here. Coffee smells good. We'll put a few more grounds in there, I think. I don't think I added quite enough. That should be good. Well, that does it for this episode of Signal Outdoors. Thanks for coming along. And I think we're safe to leave the backyard now. I think we got it, got it kind of figured out. So, And uh, camping trips, the winter trips are going to get easier from here out. It's only going to warm up. So, We'll catch you later. Remember, hike until the signal's weak.